Thank you for joining us today. My name is Maria Stutzmany Marquez and I serve as a Director of Graduate Admissions and Recruitment here at Mendoza College of Business at the University of Notre Dame. And it is my delight to share with you more about our admissions process. Um, just to give you a brief overview in the next five to 10 minutes, my hope is to share with you more about our holistic approach to provide you with some information about the components of the application and then perhaps even some best practices. So to kick off today, I wanna to share with you how intentional the admissions process is, especially as it relates to what we call a holistic review of your application. Um, we are very keen to learn more about you through this process and what that looks like is having so many people within our community actually have stake in your acceptance. So when you have applied and you press submit, um, your file goes to multiple reviewers to read your file. Um, from then, we take all of that information to a larger admissions committee, which does include, again, additional members of the community. Um, when your, your file is reviewed, we then decide whether or not to advance you to an interview. And so, again, that's another opportunity for us to learn more about you. All of our interviews are gonna be virtual, um, a part of a holistic review and creating an unbiased approach to your uh, review is really important to us. Uh, we wanna create as much access and opportunity to programs within higher ed, especially at the graduate management education level. Um, so just know that there's a number of different steps and thoughts and pedagogy involved in really ensuring that you have an excellent process through. So once you've finished your virtual interview all of your information in your file comes back to an admissions committee where we get to review basically from start to finish um, your application and then it'll be um, sent on for a final decision. A question we get often is when will you find out? Um, so our admissions process, all of these steps usually take between six and eight weeks. And so around that time, um, you'll learn more about your final decision. So. Um, if you do have any questions, you know, I would encourage you to reach out to some of our admissions professionals, especially as you're considering some of our specialized master's programs. Uh, we have a number of people um, ready and willing to help you uh, to understand the process and to learn more about each of the steps. All right, so I talked a little bit about the overall process and now it's really a focus on the components. So the application is put together again so that we can review your file holistically in a very non-biased way and so that we're able to get to learn more about what you value and the types of contributions that you'll bring to the community here at Mendoza College of Business. Within that, we also want to know how our curriculum, faculty, and community will have an impact on your experience as a candidate and a student here at Mendoza. So in order to do that, we have structured the application in a way to gather as much information as possible. So I'll walk through these components briefly, and there's more information when you open the application. So the statement of purpose is meant to be a quick, you know, 100 word statement about, you know, which program you're choosing and how that really then connects to your long-term and short-term aspirations. So very sweet and simple. Think of if you were to write something on Twitter in 160 characters or less, <laughs> what would that look like? All right, then the next are gonna be the essays. So in the essay, what we're really hoping to learn from you is more about um, you know, the values that you bring and really how you will show up as a, part of, as a member of the community and a member of the program. So it's really important as we're considering you know, creating a really uniquely diverse and rich class, uh, we wanna better understand your voice and how you'll contribute to that class. There may be some you know, prerequisites depending on the program that you're looking into. So as you're digging into the research on, on the respective program, please you know, make sure that those prerequisites are checked off. Um, another thing that we look for is, I would say this idea of academic readiness. And academic readiness falls into a couple of these components. Um, you can imagine that we look at your undergraduate transcripts um, quite closely. So if you have transcripts from multiple schools, please include all of them. It's really important that we get a sense of your um, educational and academic trajectory um, throughout your undergraduate experience. If you've taken other graduate courses or additional type of degree certificates, um, include that in your resume. I think that's a great place to add that type of information. But if you do have transcripts, 
we, will, we would love to see them. Another area in academic readiness is test scores. So for some of the programs, we'll ask that, you know, it's required that you submit a GRE score or a GMAT test score. Um, and then, you know, we're also able to offer a waiver. And that is something that's happened over the last few years. So if you meet a specific threshold by program with your GPA, then there is potential to request a test waiver, which is actually, I think, pretty great, and it offers a lot more access and opportunity. So if that's something that's important for you, please do um, submit for that. Um, and then know that we are seeking uh, a deeper review of your transcripts to make sure that you're prepared for the rigorous nature of the program that you're applying to. All right, so we also have um, what I think is really fun, and it helps us to connect you to the statements that you've written to your resume and to other aspects of your application is the video assessment. So we provide you with an opportunity to do an asynchronous live video um, where we ask you some icebreaker questions and then we also ask you questions in a couple of different categories. So, you know, we've all been on Zoom and we're very familiar with video now, so it's just an opportunity for us to get to know you and your personality. Um, and at the end, you know, when we're coming to decision committees, we get to connect you um, to your full application in that way. And I think that's a really nice way for us to, again, continue to be intentional about the work that we're doing through admissions. There's another great way for you to express yourself more creatively um, through a slide presentation. So this is really four PowerPoint slides. Um, I think you can use other elements like Google Slides or what have you. So please, you know, take a look at the application for that. Um, but this is a great way to express things about yourself that you haven't had an opportunity to in your resume, your essays, um, or, you know, in other statements. So. You know, we've seen anything from family photos to travel adventures to people who, you know, have a strong affinity for their, their pets. <laughs> so, yeah, please provide and share more about us. Again, our hope is to better learn uh, more about you so that we can really see how you'll fit into the larger cohort. And, you know, I've mentioned this a couple of times about your resume, right? So the resume should be a one-page statement about um, the work experience that you've had to date. You can list things from undergraduate as well. So if you've had a graduate assistant role, you've been a teaching assistant, um, or you've had internships, those are great places uh, to really communicate to us that you've you know, had some experience outside of the classroom as well. Um, if you're engaged in clubs and um, other activities that also add an element of leadership, please include that in your resume. Again, anything is... Uh, you, you almost don't want to think about the resume as if it were applying for a job. You want to think about how it communicates who you are and where you're going. All right. And the last thing that I've not spoken about is recommendations. So we ask that you provide us with two recommendations. One can come from a professor or faculty member that you've worked with an undergraduate. Another, we'd like for it to be somebody who has been in a supervisory role. Uh, but you know, if you have any questions about who you might want to select for that, please reach out to our admissions professionals. Again, they're standing by to answer some of these more fine-tuned questions. But all that said, um, you know, uh, we're looking for their response to you as a candidate when it comes to your performance and also your character. So that's really going way into the details around the components, but I hope that you're able to find more information um, through some of the events that we're hosting virtually as well. And so let's talk about the admission cycle as a whole. We work in rounds, so we ask that you take a look at the timing and the dates of each of these rounds. Um, once you apply, we have um, once you apply, you basically will have a set of virtual interviews and then the decision release, and that happens pretty cyclic cyclically. <laughs> cyclically. So um, when you are um, considering your application, uh, just think about which round is going to be the best time for you to apply. Um, you may be, um, you know, in an undergraduate program that, you know, may require exams and, you know, other really important key projects. So just make sure that it's a time when you can really put forth a lot of um, energy into your application. And then finally, best practices. So 
um, we ask that you apply early, um, especially if you're already committed to being a student here at the University of Notre Dame and Mendoza College of Business. If this is a place that really speaks to you, I think an early decision application is a good one. But again, make sure that it's uh, the right uh, timing for you. Um, one thing that's different from early decision based on Undergraduate perspective, our early decision applicants are not binding. Um, it just is a term that we use for you know, people to apply um, at the early stages. Um, decisions are released um, at a specific time, and so you know, one of the things that we like to say is the earlier that you apply, uh, the more prepared you'll be for orientation and the programming that starts in the summer and fall for some of these programs. Um, we ask that you submit your portion of the application by the deadline. Um, if we don't receive m most of the components by you know, five to 10 days after the deadline, your application will be automatically moved uh, to the next round. So that's something to keep note of. And then um, we accept unofficial copies of your transcripts. So all those transcripts I talked about from all of the institutions that you've attended, uh, we will take an unofficial copy. We'll just need the official copy once you've been matriculated. So those are some of the best practices. But you know, if I were to offer like one piece of advice is, um, you know, we talk about authenticity through the process. Um, we're asking for you to share more about who you are and what this type of a program means to you and the type of impact that it will have on you, your, the legacy that you'll leave, but also how you'll contribute. So think about those things as you're um, sorting through the application. We are so excited to learn more about you. Thank you for taking the time with me today.